In this video, we are going to study the new virtualized component that comes with Blazor in SP.NET 5. The idea is the following, everything that you see on the screen have to be rendered so that the user can see it, but what if you have too many things to render in such a way that because of that, because of that fact that there are too many elements to render, then the application gets slow. In order to fix this, we can use the virtualization technique. With the virtualization technique, we can limit the rendering of the UI to only those elements that are visible to the user. This is important because, as we said, if there are too many elements on a screen, then the application can get slow. Well, that is something that certainly can happen. Right now, we have this component here in which I can put the number of lines of data that this table is going to display. I can put, for example, 50 and I can generate the employees. And as you can see, we have 50 lines and every single line have some text, a calendar and an H column, which is calculated from this data we have here. So for example, I can update this date. And as you can see, this H right here is going to be automatically updated which is great. And as you can see, everything is really fast. If I click on here and I click on here, let's say 1995, you can see that we have 25 here. And if I click on here and select today, you can see that everything goes really quickly. That is because we don't have too many elements in the HTML document. If I change this to 50, thousand for example and i click on generate you can see that it is a little bit slow it hasn't even finished yet loading the fifty thousand rows and you're going to see that not only that but our functionality of updating this data we have here and then calculating the age of the employee in this column that we have here is also going to be severely affected and now, as you can see, we have the 50,000 rows. And now let's say that I want to update this data we have here. For that, I can press the up key and I just press the up key. But as you can see, nothing is changing. It took a while in order to change the value of this input type date. And not only that, if I click on here and I click on today, I will click on today now. And as you can see, it updated this, but it hasn't still update the age. Now it has done it, but as you can see, everything is very slow. Everything takes a few seconds, which is annoying for the user. And as I was saying, the reason for this is that there are too many elements rendered on the screen and the HTML document is overloaded with information. Now with the virtualized component, what we're going to do is that we're only going to render what the user can see on a screen. So for example, right now, the user cannot see lines one, two, three, four, etc. So those lines will be out of the HTML document. We can see that if we press F12 and I go to elements and I look for this HTML table, here we have the T body. And here, as you can see, we have many, many, many table rows here. With the virtualized component, we can avoid this mess. So let's do that. Let's go to Visual Studio and let's see what we have. I have this component here, which have this simple table here, and I am doing a simple for each here in which we are iterating this employees list, which is a list of employee. And as you can see, this is a simple model, a simple class with four properties. And let's go back to our component. And as you can see, I am initializing the list with this method that we have here, which generates as many employees as we want. So as I was saying, the problem is here in this for each because we are putting all of this HTML on the HTML document and then everything has to be rendered, which slows down my Google Chrome browser. So what I can do is to use the new virtualized component. Let's delete this from here. And now let's say virtualize, which is the new component. And let's put this here. And I will say items. I can do two things. I can either pass the list of items or pass a method that will generate the items as needed. For now, let's make this a sample. 
and we're going to do the function in a bit. So let me say employees here, and let me use context to change the context variable to employee, employee. And now as you can see, we don't have any errors here, and I can save, and that's actually it. With this, we have solved our issue. Let's refresh here, and now let's generate the 50,000 rows. Let's click on here, and let's start scrolling. And as you can see, we have our same 50,000 rows. But now if I click on here, and I start editing this, you can see that everything now is instantaneous. I can click on here also, and click on today, and as you can see, this was immediately updated, which means that we are being efficient with the rendering of our component because now we are only rendering what's on the screen, what the user can actually see. Let's see that. Let's press F12 again, and let's go to our table. Let's click on here, and let's click on here. And as you can see, the first row is the one with ID 49984, and not only that, but you can see that there are definitely not 50,000 table rows on the HTML document. And let's see again this value. And let's see that if I go up, let's say to here, you can see that everything was updated here. And now this value is 18722, which means that we are actually only rendering those table rows that the user can actually see. Actually, it is more than that because it is those plus a few more that are up here and the idea of that is to have a smooth experience for the user but nevertheless what is important here is that now our application is being more efficient with the rendering process because what Virtualize is doing is to dynamically render those elements that are visible on the screen and ignoring everything else and in that way, we are avoiding the overloading of the HTML document. Let's close this. And now let's go back to Visual Studio because I want to talk about that method that I was referring to earlier that you can pass to this virtualized component that is going to allow us to, instead of having to generate, let's say, the 50,000 employees, we can generate them in a lazy manner as we need them. Let's see that. Let's go down here and I will paste this method here. This method called load employees is going to receive a items provider request which contains information about where the user is on the table, how many employees to request and so on. As you can see, here I calculate the request quantity. This is important for those tables that may have, for example, less than something like 15 elements or so. That's why I'm doing a math min here. And I'm doing a get employees, which is going to have now the start index because this is going to mimic a pagination system. So let's go here and let's say int initial. And now I can specify the starting element and how many elements we're going to generate after that. So let's say here initial and here initial plus quantity and then we return this result that we are constructing here which is an items provider result of employee which contains the employees and the amount of employees and we have to return a value task of this result now here i am going to say zero and zero for the initial values and finally i will take this load employees from here and I will change this to items provider. And let me delete this and let me paste this here, load employees. And everything is going to work. But let me put here a console log so that you can see that as we scroll down or scroll up through the table, then this method is going to be executed. So let's say right line executing load employees. Now let's give this a go. Let's go back here and let's refresh the page and now let's press F12 and let's go to console and let's generate our 50,000 employees and now let's start scrolling down and as you can see we can see here that this executing load employees message is being executed or is being displayed in the console several times 
And that is because we are generating the employees as we go. We don't have a fixed list to work with, but we are lazily loading the employees. In summary, use the virtualized component when you have some sort of infinite scrolling or you understand that you have too many elements to display and you want to only render those that are on a screen so that the application doesn't get a slow. If you want to learn how to build a Blazor application from scratch, check out my Blazor Udemy course today. And if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.